look out. Footy's back. G'day. I'm the king, Wayne Carey, and it's my birthday week. Wait, no. None of that makes sense. It's not Wayne Carey's birthday. It's not him as me, because I'm James Clements, and it's not my birthday either. But it is the king's birthday weekend extravaganza of AFL footy here on the AFL Today Show. I am James Clements, and over here we are joined by... Local weirdo, full blown foot enough. Some would call him an AFL expert. He's the stats boy, Liam McKellen. What's going on, stats boy? Yeah, I'm very glad it's not Wayne Carey's uh, birthday weekend. There could be some stuff in the news if it was. And I'm very excited for Monday. Get your beanies. Uh, big freeze is always very exciting. Keen to see guys down the slide and uh, great game of footy. I love that. Big, big weekend ahead. The toughest part, I guess, for Wayne Carey is remember how he refused to watch footy again? Yeah. So I wonder if he's watching it ever again. He's just, he said he's <laughs> never going to watch footy again, so yeah, that's a lie. it sucks to be him, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel across all of the socials as well for the AFL Today Show for all your footy gear, including this week. What did we have? The most uh, handsome 22. We yep. had the best blokes all-Australian team, which I very much enjoyed because I did it off the top of my head. That was so funny. It yeah. was chaos. So... Uh, were there other things that we did? There was some other stuff. Go check it out. Oh, stuff about Dusty, stuff about uh, Adelaide trades and things like that. Bit of, right. everything, bit of everything. Lots of stuff out there. Go mm-hmm. check them all out. But the thing is, footy's back. And this is the Thursday team show. So by the time we get to the game previews, which is what we do for the Thursdays, the teams will have dropped. Yep. We're about to take you through each exactly. and every game. It'll be very nice. But before that, we've got some news. Ooh. My beloved Lockie Fogarty. <laughs> I've never heard you say those words ever, but yeah. <laughs> Did you know that Carlton are 16 and 2 when Fogarty plays since the start of 20 and 23? 28 and 23. 20 and 23. <laughs> really? 16 and 2. Is that? Jeez, get him back in. Get him in. He's gone to the Matthew Delavadova School of Heart, Grit, and Determination. He which has. Uh, He just spends all his time there, I reckon. He's just a. <laughs> he's the player that. You need that bottom level of dude, right, where they just give their all. Yep. And I love him. The one so. percenters, yeah. I love I love Lucky Fogarty. So Two well, years, why not? That's yeah. great. Uh, hey, Essendon mentioned Taron Thomas in a letter to the members and how they're not after signing him, yeah. <laughs> which is a remarkable sort of statement, I think, here, Stats Man, where they're like, hey, you know how our coach keeps mentioning Taron Thomas? We want no bar of him, yeah. just so you guys know. Why Why would they need to clarify that? Well, thing? it's because very clearly there were Essendon yeah. members going, hey, yeah. what's up with that? Because that's weird. Can we not do that? And the Essendon board yeah. have clearly gone, yeah, we're not doing that. When Brad Scott is like talking about Tara and Thomas, it's literally just like nothing to do with like recruitment or anything like that. He's just talking about him as a dude. Yeah, Brad Scott got into his own head with going, oh, yeah, he was. I was friends with him when I coached the North Melbourne and then just forgot about all the crap things he did. Being a North fan... Watching Taron Thomas, yeah, he should never play again anyway. So that's another that's another whole podcast right there. That's a big call. <laughs> but, uh, hey, speaking of big calls, Frio. The yeah. West Australian were kicking this around today. They're going after Shay Bolton, apparently. Yeah. I love this when Twitter rumours just come to life and, like, the media <laughs> just go, this is a thing that's happening. And it's like, is it, though? Is it? Maybe. 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 It's Could that, they go after him? Sure. I Will they? Maybe. He hasn't had a great season in the uh, last well, year and a half. But They also have player. an absolute bucket load of uh, first rounders, right, to basically throw at somebody like that yep. who Richmond might look at and go, ah, yeah, look, I'd rather have the three firsts, yep. maybe. Well, and but they need a it, forward. I know it's not a tall forward, but they need just forwards in general. So yeah, I think he's a good pickup for a free and he would fit in pretty nicely. But... We'll see if it actually happens or if it actually is real or not. In a if you're of Richmond, months. the conversation starts at three first rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll talk, yeah right? Maybe four because they're like, it's not a contract get... till 2028. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Anyway, I do like a good midweek story. Like, hey, these guys are coming after this dude. He's like, he's contracted <laughs> till 2028. Yeah. This also, so we talked about Fogarty re signing. In the mid midweek madness show, we did talk about all the re signings. Yeah. I have come around to the point where I'm like, this is, these contracts are too long. I think almost every AFL contract is too long. They have so many eight-year ones. Yeah. Almost every single one of them might be. Yeah. No, uh, the weirdest part is we don't really get into the nitty-gritty of like what might be club options, team options, all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be nice if there was a lot more, I don't know, clarity in sort of this sort of stuff when it comes to contracts, but I don't know. I think it's to do – Alex was talking about the other uh, the other week about – you have to pay them less. Obviously, the price and salary cap goes up every year. If exactly. you just lock them in now, you go, oh, I don't have to pay you as much in like 10 years' time. Yeah, it makes sense from a team time. perspective. Yeah. And like as a player, you're like, great, I'm cashing in. This is unreal. Mm-hmm. And it works for them, obviously, under the salary cap, six yeah. years down the track where the salary cap has risen. Yes. Of course, that all makes sense. I just find it weird that like play, like that's the way they operate. If you're a smarter player, like I'd rather do You'd shorter rather deals. You'd rather do two, yeah. And then and like other clubs will come involved. LeBron yeah. James this entire Exactly. Thing. Like yeah. one plus one. Let's <laughs> go. One plus one. Uh, anyway. Outside of this, other news, uh, John Todd, 
football yes. legend out there in it's WA. He passed away, former uh, Eagles coach, mm -hmm. 86. He was a legend, yeah. Yeah, he was. That's pretty cool. Like a South Frio legend, I believe. Yep. Uh, other little bits of news. Uh, the clubs were given a bunch of extra sort of info about the holding the ball rule here, Stats Boy. I haven't seen this yet. There we, it was there we go. Uh, videos where they're like, this is holding the ball. Oh, I did say that. And they're like, yeah. Like, it's been holding the ball we, for like 40 years. Ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Hold it. Like, of course it was holding the ball. It looks like holding the ball. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, guess <laughs> what? It might be a duck. It's also the duck that's holding the ball. Uh, speaking of duck, we talked about Wayne Terry. We talked about Wayne Terry, the duck. But yeah. anyway, the point being, uh, the league has basically sent out this, uh, you know, memo basically to teams going, hey, remember how we changed the rules last week? And everyone's like, oh, yes, we do remember that. <laughs> we'll clarify that. Yeah. So remarkably, across the round, there was a 40% rise in holding the ball calls. I like that. So that's fine. Mm. Uh, the season average, I think, was 8.4. It's now up to 11.4. So uh, it's an extra of 2.9 free kicks per game, basically. Oh, quick, quick math. Sure. <laughs> That's why they call me a math magician, stats boy. <laughs> uh, Where's your cape? <laughs> I left it at home. Oh. Gerald's got an iron. Uh, but either way, <laughs> either way uh, it is weird, though, that the AFL's like, hey, remember how we did this? This is a clarification. And the team's like, thanks, I week, guess. Week late, I it's guess, like, yeah. Right, maybe we could have like looked at this prior to the last mm. week and went, these will be the things that will probably be holding the ball from yeah. here on out, let alone after the fact. Like, that one's one who's holding the ball. <laughs> yeah. It's like, geez. To right. be fair, it's not going to change the way that teams play, I don't think. There's still, other than a, a few players, like if you, a few midfielders might have to get it rid of it quicker, but you're, they're already trying to do that, I think. I think they will pr appreciate the clarification. Yeah. Fair enough. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Hey, should we play more games overseas, stats man? Oh, this is the hardest question probably since AFL started. They tried what? A few battle of the the New Zealand, in, yeah, had China, London, a couple of games. Keep the rabbits out. China definitely didn't work. That was China. horrible. <laughs> yeah, keep the rabbits out. Keep the rabbits out. Yeah, I love that. Ad. Um, no, I, I'm I'm torn on this. I used to work at oh. AFL Europe. There is a lot of people that love footy over there and play footy, but. It's just not big enough for the crowds and things like that. London could work, but it's just a big... We live it's nowhere really near anywhere like that is worth travelling to. So, I don't know. I think the more preseason games you play in the UK, mm. the smarter and the better. Yeah, yeah. I think that could work. There's lots of Aussies. Across in Europe, et cetera, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, we can't get more than like a Richmond-Melbourne game. No. Nah. We can't get like more than 40,000 at. Like, yeah, what are we doing here? Exactly. We can't get 30,000. Like, what are we doing? Uh I feel, and so the entire point was Andrew Gillen Dillon, apparently my adversary now. Sure. We're just going hammer and songs. Give me back Thursday night footy. How is this the last week, Andrew Gillen Dillon? You can't afford a haircut, let alone a bloke who's making decisions where we're doing it Thursday night footy and ruining the lives of AFL fans everywhere. You're Sad. breaking my heart. Sad. No, he's all right. Anyway. <laughs> he's coming on the show next week. No. Yeah, next week. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll be best mates next week. It'll be great. <laughs> no, to be honest, like the Andrew Dillon Gillen stuff, Andrew Dillon, like the. Decision to go, all right, Thursday night footy, we're, we're dunskies with this. Not is, great, but there is literally no AFL fan going, no, yeah. good. I don't, I've never met someone that said, we don't want Thursday night footy. It's like, geez, oh, you know what I hate? Thursday night footy. That has literally never been said by no, an AFL fan. Definitely not. And the AFL not being able to read that is remarkably short-sighted, I feel. That's the other one with playing overseas, same sort of vibe. No one's saying we need to play overseas. Well, at least their, so their entire point was they don't have any plans to play overseas. They're going to focus on grassroots and stuff like I think that, that's which fair. is very smart. So that's fair. next year, if you give us Thursday night footy all season, but also I've pitched this to you before, community round. It's not hard. Mm. Just go to Ballarat. We're going to Horsham. Yeah, they they, they need to do Warrigal. that more. They, they've started to do that a little bit better, but definitely do that, do that more. Anyway, let's do some game preview. Ooh. Let's Four. get into it. Round 13 of the AFL. We're more than halfway through the season now here, Stats Boy. We are. The teams are out, which is lovely. The teams are out. So we've already picked our Thursday night gear yes. on yesterday's show. The teams actually sort of came out for that. And obviously, Tech's out. Riley O'Brien got dropped for that game. Stiff Matt Crouch yeah. is obviously out injured. Um, Braden Cook injured mm -hmm. as well. Billy Dowling makes his debut. That's kind of nice. He was exciting. If in the Will uh, Hamill, the Mark Hamill's son. Careful. Luke Skywalker. No. <laughs> Will Hamill, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Just making jokes. No, I like that. I Kieran like Strawn. Strawny. Strawny. Ned McHenry. <laughs> uh, but the Tigers obviously got Shea Bolton, Tim Taranto, Dion Presti, the meatball. That is three massive ins. Love that. Um, to the Christmas. point where I did consider flipping my pick. Ooh. If this was at the G, If this possibly? was anywhere else other than Adelaide Oval, where Adelaide would just get on a bit of a roll and smash them, yeah. I'd maybe think about it. And Jacob Kajitsky comes in as well. Yeah, that's not a good in. So, <laughs> cool. There you go. Crows, I'm still going to pick the Crows uh, before that tips off in just a second. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go Adelaide by 30 as well. I think they're going to be too strong. 
Friday night footy. Friday night footy. <laughs> Friday night footy. Oh, three oh, genres man. in one there. That this is good. a weird one. The dogs <laughs> and the lions at Marvel. So the dogs you might remember last week played at Marvel on Friday night. They did they an won. away game, which was which was fun for them. They played away and they won yes. against the Pies uh, with our man the Bont having a career high thirty eight disposals, dominating the game. Beast. Yep. The dogs are nine and a half point favourites over the Brisbane Lions. Why is that, stats boy? Oh, oh might be because the Lions aren't very good this year. What's yeah, going on? That's part of it, but another part of it is dogs have won their last seven home matches against the Lions. They have so, not lost to the Lions at Marvel since twenty fourteen. Ooh, really? Because they've actually I, played other games at Mars. Yes, that's right. So, in uh, Ballarat, yeah. Your, I know where Ballarat is. You do, yes. Yeah, <laughs> your, your hometown. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah, dogs, I think, if the, yeah, at Marvel, wherever this game was, I think that's that 9.5 or maybe 10.5 would have been the would have been about the line. The other answer is the Brisbane Lions are 4, 6, and 1. What the Gabbatois is no longer really the Gabbatois. No. And they're in, on the road where, look, the Lions aren't too bad usually at Marvel, but it just seems like the dogs have the wood over them. So uh, the Bont loves playing against them. Interesting fact. Jack McRae as well. Doesn't mind ripping off 30-plus against the Lions. Oh, okay. Other flip side as well. Josh Dunkley. You might remember him. He used to play for the Western Bulldogs. He likes playing against them. Now plays the Lions. He's only played one game. Oh, I he thought it would be a couple disposals. of That's it. I think he nice. missed like uh, the last one last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so the big question. Big question. Can the dogs just keep doing this? They can't keep doing this. What do you mean? Win, loss, win, loss. <laughs> well, they've actually ripped off some straight wins now, haven't they? Uh, They're six and six. Have they gone two in a row, maybe? Uh, for the first time all year? No, because they lost to the Swans. No, nah, so. they got to win, loss, win, loss. No, they won two in a row because they beat the Tigers and then they beat the Giants. And okay. then they lose, They got smashed by Sydney. Then well, they won. Smashed. They lost to Sydney. Yes. Uh, beat the Pies last week. So the question is, can they go, we had two wins. Then One we lost. loss. Two wins, again. two wins again. That's consistency, if though. I don't can, know how dogs and consistency go. If they can, every Bulldogs fan will be just over the moon. Yep. They'll be just like, this is great. If we lose one game for every two that we win, we're flying. Yeah, well, because so. they're what are they? They're still 500. Exactly. Six, uh, at, at the 500 mark. Uh, it's a fascinating setup. I don't think the Lions defensively are – look, just the, they're just missing too many dudes at this point, the Lions. Mm. I think defensively they're going to really struggle with this Bulldogs uh, midfield, which yep. gets Libba back because if we go through the teams, uh, Libba comes back and so does Buku Kamas. Uh, no Ed Richards. He was an out yesterday anyway. So James Harms obviously goes out. Sam Darcy was suspended. The Lions get Hipwood. Big hippie. He comes back and Brandon Stasevich. Yeah, yeah that's actually, that's some good in. Stasevich is a good player. Hipwood, but very, Libba, very up and down. Libby gives that dogs midfield yeah. even more uh, defensive sort of now. So I still like the dogs by two goals here. Stats man. Yeah, I'm still like dogs by 10. I, I think this is going to be really close all the way through because no Sam Darcy. you got no Norton. Jamara doesn't usually play that well on his own, so he's going to have to step up. Uh, usually, yeah, he's got the third defender, second defender. He's going to have the number one defender on him, which is going to be really interesting. But, yeah, dogs, I think, at home are going to get the job done. Lions, they've actually been really good at Marvel. Nine and three in the last, uh, was it, five years or something like that. But, yeah, their form's been horrible, so you got to go to the dogs, I think. Nice one. Should we get on to Saturday? Why not? For Hawthorne. We're going down to Tassie. Oh, How is James Isley playing? Let's have a look. He is. Uh, he's oh, going to Tassie. <laughs> he's against his own will. Oh, he's, he's... I love it. Sam Mitchell's had to drag him onto the boat. 100%. He doesn't like going there. They get in the spirit of Tasmania. He's like, oh, I just don't want to go. He's like, get on the boat. He's like, can't we fly? He's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they get the spirit of Tasmania. They get the spirit of Tassie. Spirit of Tassie. <laughs> They'll get the cars on there and everything. Nice. Have a bit of a nap. Uh, 1.45 <laughs> p.m. on Saturday. Uh, the over-under for this one is 163.5. We should have mentioned that it's pretty high over-under for the Dogs' lines. Yes. 171.5. I think Actually, that's fair, yeah. I like the over because mm. the Dogs keep scoring. Six plenty. of the last seven Dogs games have gone over. There we go. That one. Yeah. Uh, for the Hawks-Giants, though, the Giants are six-and-a-half-point favorites in Tassie against the Hawks. Mm -hmm. That over-under, 163.5. Like, do you trust this Hawthorne team that looked horrible the first five weeks? But since then, Stats Boy I mean, has been scores. really, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. They're five and two since that 0-5 start. Now, for the over-under, I haven't got a stat on it, but the Giants' have, offense has been horrible. They obviously had an awesome start. They were averaging over 100 points. Since then, they've had a lot of games around that those 60-point marks, and the same as Hawks. Hawks actually have been getting some wins, a couple of games over 100, but I don't think that goes over. I'm going under in this one. Tricky. Mm. Uh, the Hawks, I mean, after they gacked up that game to the power, yep. they then smoked <clears throat> the Lions, smoked yep. Adelaide, and could they then smoke the Giants? Uh, uh, really, that might be the big question. Are the Hawks the real deal? Because if they win this, there is still a, a pretty good finals. chance of actually playing finals. Yeah. Like they're in 12th at the moment. They're 5-7. and seven. 
if they keep rolling and actually they've got a horrible percentage, like 86.7. Yeah, but that's all right. They've got a fun, weird list and they can keep taking teams by surprise. They can mm. probably rack up enough wins here and there to at least threaten, yeah. which is kind of fun. By form, you'd, you'd be sort of have to lean towards Hawks, but just, I don't know, they're going to crumble at some point. They're, their list, if you're looking at both of these teams on paper, you're going, gee, yeah, we should absolutely smoke them, but just Hawks are playing so well as a team. Sam Mitchell's doing a really good job, uh, obviously, since clark has gone away from there, as uh, Jim would uh, like, to, like to say, but... Yeah, I think it, this, this week we'll, we'll be able to tell if the Hawks are the real deal and if they right. can make finals. No changes for the Hawks. Giants bring back Callum Brown and Callum Ward. It's a lot of Callums and Callums. <laughs> Got a Callums. Yeah. Uh, Harry Perriman goes out and so does Caniglio, obviously, Ooh, with Cogs. that weird shoulder. No good. Uh, they still have, like, plenty of plenty of class, that Giants team, right? But they are sort of without Josh Kelly, without Caniglio. Yeah, he's it's a out. lot of heavy lifting by... Callum you know, Brown and Cal- both the yeah, Brown and Ward are massive into. When They've you look at really their good. sort of like followers and stuff, you're like, it's Callum Ward, Finn Callahan. Then in the center, you've got Xavier O'Halloran, Tom Green, and Jacob Weir. Like, it's just, it's not much, right? Uh, yeah. Green's obviously a great player. Call- Callahan is, uh, been, Finn Callahan's been really good this year, but yeah, not the stars that you're used to seeing it's in bizarre. there. Hmm. It's a bit tough. And then you got, who have you got? I'm for, really uh, tempted to go to the Hawks, but I'm going to go GWS by it. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm going GWS by two goals. Uh, they had a draw one time there, uh, but they have one down there as well. And they've won their last six games with a 10 plus day turnaround. Bit of a random. Oh, yeah, they're coming off the uh, buy. Yeah, coming off the buy, out. which some teams don't like, but GWS have won their last six. Actually, Brisbane are coming off the buy as well against the Dogs, aren't they? Yeah, but mm. some teams don't play well after buy. Like Geelong, for example, always lose after a buy. Sure. Hmm. Uh, Hawks are six and three at Utahs. Yes, GWS one, one, and one. There must have been a draw in there that nice. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So we're both going GWS. Yes. Good job, Stats, man. I don't know. Can they kick? It's a, a tough. Can they kick a tough, winning score? There's two really tough games, and that's yeah, that's one of them. They they could because Hogan, Riccardi, Green, like mm. they need to make a big statement at some point. Yes, yeah. there's going to be just like the shine is already off the Giants. And yeah. it could, if they lose this game, like the absolute wheels are coming off because they'd be seven and five if they lost. They're already they in seven. Finals. They could be getting pretty weird. Crazy. Uh, anyway, if uh, if Alex, do, oh, they're not they don't play finals. Yeah, they're not <laughs> I don't finals. think he's got an eight. I they don't play he's finals. Got, lots of people aren't playing finals. <laughs> uh, West Coast, uh, twenty and a half oh. point favorites over the North Melbourne Clarko Roos. This is at home make... at Optus Stadium Saturday afternoon at four thirty-five in the afternoon. The over/under is one fifty-three point five, which I am just flabbergasted by. These are two horrible defensive teams. Yeah, it could go over. It yeah. should smash this over. Yeah. Oh, I need like, to see the ins and outs in this, actually. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do the team. Lineups, lineups, lineups. Jakey Waterman. Damn it. Jay he's Train. <laughs> no. He's going to kick eight. <laughs> Jack Hutchinson makes his debut as well. Yep. Jai Cully. That's pretty fun. Jack Jai Cully's a good player. Obviously. Whoa, Holly Reed. Bam, a lamb. He got suspended. Bam, a lamb. He's out two weeks. Bam, a lamb. He's playing against the team. Bam, a lamb. That could have drafted him. Bam, a lamb. But they don't need him. Bam, a lamb. <laughs> That wasn't bad off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the the Roos, Callan Dawson and Jai Simpkin, stats boy. Uh, I don't mind Callan Dawson. Jai Simpkin is obviously the co-skipper, but he's been horrible this year. So not as excited as I used to be when Jai Simpkin was back in the team. But. All right. Zane Dersm has managed. Lazaro's dog goes out as oh, well. Oh, Lazaro. Poor Lazaro. All right. So I've got some stats for us, stats boy. Oh, I don't want to read this one out, but we were talking about this before. North... My beloved North have lost 31 of their last 32 games. Hey, is that good or is, been, that, is that uh, good or bad? That's that's not great. It's probably the worst almost of all time. I've probably been to at least 16 of them. I haven't seen a win in a couple of years. It's it's been very sad. And that's a that's another story. Uh, but I've got some uh, stats that lean towards North, which is very rare. West Coast have failed to cover the line in 10 of their last 11 games as favourite. North have won that won two of the last three at Optus Stadium. One was against Freo. One was against uh, West Coast. And then West Coast are three, and, but then West Coast are three and three at home this season. They're a yep. much better team at home. If this was at Marvel or anywhere away, they've been way worse. Horrible. But their their big home crowd lifts them. Uh, Harley Reid has been the big impact at home. He's not playing, so I don't know. This could be Said pretty the magic close, words. But- Whoa, <laughs> Harley Reid, Bam Bam, Whoa, <laughs> Harley Reid, Bam Bam. <clears throat> yeah. So like the there is some little stats that help to lean towards North, but West Coast at home have been really good this year. Nice one. Uh, the big question for me is: Does the winner get Harley Reid? <laughs> Honestly, I said we didn't need Harley Reid at the start of the year. Yes, I think I think that seems fair. I think, I think you could <laughs> you could use Harley Reid. <laughs> you lost thirty one of thirty two games, stats boy, and the one yeah. game that you won cost you Harley Reid. Cost us Harley Reid. It's a bit. It ironic. is the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. I. But look, Suva kicked like eight, so it's all good. Like, <laughs> no, I don't think anywhere near enough is being made about this. Yeah, because I don't want to talk You've about it. You've lost 31 <laughs> of 32 games. Yeah. I've You're been to North most Melbourne. Of them. Yeah. 
And the one game that you won cost you a very clear and obvious generational talent. It was a fun game. We beat, we beat Gold Coast by like 60 points. Wins are fleeting. <laughs> Harley Reid's are forever. This is what it's about. Uh, Even Gerald laughed at that yeah, one. <laughs> he knows my pain. He knows my pain. Uh, I'm taking the Eagles at home by 15. Ooh, not covering the line though. I don't think they cover the line. I think this is a pretty fun back and forth affair. Saturday afternoon out there in the West. Should be good. All right. Uh, I can't believe I'm doing this. First time all year. North by one. One singular point. It's going to be a, a point, like someone rushed or like a late point. Just going to get over the line. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a draw. Uh, yeah, but I'm going North by one. I'm going to tip us. Decent record at Optus. Actually, I have a lot of fans uh, in WA, which is very strange. But every time we go over there, there's a lot of fans. We used to recruit from there sure. originally back in the VFL days. So there's a lot of fans there. They'll be up and about. North's going to get their first win of the season. Is Wayne Carey allowed back in that uh, casino? <laughs> no, I don't think he's allowed in every casino. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not allowed there. Yeah. King's birthday. <laughs> Speaking of Kings. Yeah. What a segue. <laughs> St. Kilda versus Gold Coast. Who plays on those teams? Stats boy. Uh, Max and Ben. For the, the first Kings. time as well as the Mackays. Yeah. They are playing against each other. Another brother ball. Love this. I love a good brother ball. <laughs> However, the Suns are two and a half point favorites on the road in Marvel. Hey, where have they won this year, Stats boy? Only at home. Only no, above oh, 28 degrees. Only, sorry, we forgot about that. Of latitude. <laughs> In the world. Yes. I completely forgot about that one. 28 degrees. Yep. You go above that, sun's unbeatable. Marvel is, that, is a lot lower than that. <laughs> what is substantially <laughs> lower. So they're actually favorites. And I don't want to take Gold Coast, but the way that the Saints have been playing, I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, I'm going to. Like, the Saints fell over the line against the Eagles, right? They yes. put the clamps on. Uh, they got. They got lucky with some laid out. Put the clamps on uh, Harley Reid and away mm-hmm. they went. But yeah, they, they did get lucky with the uh, J train missing. And Tim Kelly, yep. The big question here is, winner gets their pick of the Kings? Well, Gold Coast is not changing. Ben exactly. King's been yeah, way better. If you're, if you're the Saints, like, yeah, can we have Ben can we have Ben? We yeah. get Ben, right? Or they just do a swap without telling the media, and maybe we don't realise. Nice. Like the Mackay Twins, they look the same. All right, give us some stats. All right, uh, Saints have lost their last 13 games against teams higher than them on the ladder. That's just a bit of a funny one, even including last year. They just couldn't beat teams that are above them on the ladder. They just go, oh, so weird. wait, they're above us on the ladder. That means they're good. Oh, they're better than us, <laughs> oh, clearly. Damn it, we can't win. Uh, Gold Coast, though, 0-4 away this year. Second worst team at Marvel also in the last six seasons. They don't wow. like playing at Marvel. They don't like playing away. Again, uh, below the 28-degree uh, latitude line, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So no good. To but the point where, like, them, if yeah. they were playing pretty much anybody that wasn't St. Kilda, I'd probably yeah. pick the other team. I right? think Saints, Richmond, North, Gold Coast away, you'd probably back them. Yep. And then everyone else, you're like, eh, I'm not sure. Like, the way they played against Carlton for three quarters at Marvel was mm-hmm. really, really good. Yep. But Carlton's sort of strategy and tactical now sort of eventually dragged them in the mud and they yep. sort of kicked away. You can sort of maybe see St. Kilda do that. There's no changes to these teams, by the way. That's what oh, we can hit teams. Oh, that's a good, so good call. They're the same for both. Yep. Uh, that's very rare in modern footy. So I think it's Liam Henry's 50th game. That's like the only sort of note. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's a weird setup where the Suns have all the talent in the world. you got Ben King, Ben Long. You've got some rising Bens, talent. Mac Andrews Ainsworth. been exciting. Mac yep. Andrews been fantastic. Landers. If he can sort of take out the likes of Max King, something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. Like you feel like it's going to be hard for St Kilda to kick away and put up a massive score. Yeah, but got- they do have Higgins back now. Rowan Marshall, yeah, despite having that massive head knock the other day, Mason Wood kicked four goals last week. You just look at the form of the like the forward lines. Obviously, Ben Long, Ben King, Bailey Humphrey, Lacocious have all been in great form for Gold Coast. I know that a lot of them were at home yep. and on in Darwin and things like that. But then you look. At the other side, you've got Mitch Owens really out of form, Max King out of form, Cameron Eady's out of form, Higgins just coming back from injury, Henry, Wilson's been great, but yeah, Henry, yeah, just a lot of guys out of oh, form. Oh, I'm smelling a big Paddy Dow game. Oh, <laughs> just as a Carlton fan. Just... Let's go, Paddy Dow. <laughs> I still love, I, look. Why do all Carlton fans love Paddy Dow? We he never Paddy, did anything he, for Carlton. Yeah, he never got a chance. <laughs> we made him redundant. That was oh, the problem. We had too many, dudes, too many dudes playing his exact position when we Lots threw him mids. into the mix of it. Yeah. Back half of last season, he was a gun. <laughs> The Saints are just like, wait, we've got Paddy Dow? Yeah, he hasn't done <laughs> anything. Is, I think this is like the same as my NBA Australia spiel the other day about Monty Williams realising he had Jaden Ivey on his oh, team. Yeah. He's like, wait, who are you? He's like, I'm Jaden Ivey. I was a lottery pick yeah, last year. He's like, just come on. wait, you're on my team? He's like, yeah, I've been here for six months. He's like, oh. are you any good? <laughs> I feel like that's the entire approach. Ross Lyons got where he's like, wait, who are you? Oh, that Paddy. Paddy what? Paddy Wow. Paddy Dow. <laughs> Wait, were you a really high draft pick like four years ago? Five <laughs> years ago? Six years? It might have been longer. Oh, and here he goes. Mean? Just let him off the leash. Come on, Ross. Uh, but this <laughs> is the big thing. I'm taking Gold Coast by a goal. Okay. 
And I'm really, really just like, we could all look very stupid when this game hits and like St Kilda just choked the ever living nah, crap you- out of them, right? And just like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's the sun's away from home mm. and it's Ross Lyon going, oh, you like to play free, fast, flowing footy? Sucked in on Ross Lyon. <laughs> yeah. And they just go to sleep, go to sleep. Clamps. And away they go. Uh, I'll agree with you. Gold Coast by 20, though. I think they can win this reasonably comfortably. Nice. Yeah. Too Sydney good. Geelong on Sunday. Over under is 172 and a half. The Swans, the latter leading Swans, mm-hmm. don't know if you've heard about that. Are they? Are they first? They're ten and one. <laughs> yeah, no one talks are, about them. Only lost to Richmond. That the was... only way that people talk about Sydney is everyone saying, "Oh, they, no one ever talks about them," and then they still don't talk. <laughs> and about then we talk about it. We talk about them so much. <laughs> anyway, the Swans are awesome. They are fantastic. The Cats, they needed that win last week pretty badly. They did, and that was looking very dire it was at halftime. Very dicey against the Tigers. Mm. They got by them in the uh, at the end by thirty. Yep, uh, but. Can they sort of bounce back? This is the sort of question for me. Because the big question here I have is like, this, if this one's just smash them, yep. it's like, just crown them the 2024 AFL champs at this point. <laughs> uh, and if they do get a smashing, are the Cats frauds? Well, yeah, they've been in a horrible form. How, how many have they lost? Three, they lost four. Just well, they lost four in a row. Four in a row last, before, before that as well. Week, right? Yeah, sorry, four in a row. Because uh, they were seven and oh, now they're seven and uh, eight yes. and four. So, but it's just an, annoying because right? you, you look at... Am uh, just making things up? No, I think you're right. You're <laughs> I right. am right, eight and four. <laughs> you're right. Back Hooray! Up. You got Sydney at the top. If, if they win by, like, cover the line here and win pretty comfortably, there's no team in the eight that I'd go that can challenge them right now. No. Uh, Carlton are second favourite to And the they odds. killed Carlton. Yeah. Like, yeah. F- a month ago. And... Literally, you got Essendon, who have only played bad teams. Geelong, just we're saying frauds. Port Adelaide, we're saying frauds. Freo, we're still Maybe not sure about. <laughs> GWS, <laughs> yeah, yeah Freo, like Freo, Carlton, it's weird. So it's an weird. 18 and a half point line, I like Sydney to cover that. The over-run yep. is 172.5. I think that goes over as well. I think there's a bit of firepower on both sides. Yep. In terms of the teams, the Swans do get back Tom McCartan. That's handy. Which is kind of cool. Debut game for Caden Cleary. Laddams is back in. There's these extended benches extended bench. for Sunday too. Yep. Blick Savs, Jai Clark, Reese Stanley, Shaw. Sean Matter. Oh, he's back. Matter from heaven. <laughs> Let's go. Out goes Ollie Henry, my beloved Ollie Henry. Breaking Injured, my heart yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Cats. So hopefully Sean Manor actually gets out there on the field, but that's the extended bench for the moment. Mm-hmm. I think the Swans killed them, Stats Boy. I've got them by 40, 40. at least. I don't mind that. I think Sydney by 30. Just uh, Yeah, you got to tip Sydney. 5-0 at home. Number one in offense. Number two in defense. They're just... They're just unstoppable at the moment. Chad so. Chunley Warner. Mm. Whoa, where roll yeah. the Heen Man. Like Logan if McDonald, you, a Marty Party, yeah. Tom Papley, oh, Will Hayward. Amazing. Like, then you go at the back, you got Florent, Blakey, McCartan back now, yep. Rampy. God, they're good. They're midfield. You could, yeah. They've got probably three or four guys in the top 10, 15 I players in the whole oh, comp. I hate it. <laughs> we just hate it because Alex talks them up. I didn't, I didn't mind Sydney before that. Anyway, <laughs> Swans by 40. How old are you taking them? How old? With, now, what are you taking them to? Oh, uh, Swans by 30. There you go. <laughs> I was like, I'm not 30. <laughs> that is at 3.20 on Sunday. Yes. At 7.20, we have Essendon versus Carlton. Sell out at the G. Should be pretty big. Mm. Will Jim be there? No. Missed out on tickets. Oh. 11 and a half point favourites are my beloved Blues playing against my beloved Bombers. <laughs> the best team in the AFL. The Jim Bowl. This is the Jim Bowl. This is what they're calling it. That Many would like... call it the Mackay Bowl because you've got Ben Mackay and Harry Mackay, Big H, playing for the first time in eight years. Mm. First time they've ever matched up. I'm still not crazy. convinced it's actually going to happen. They are the same person still. They've always gotten injured. Laid out. I went for North. Laid I'd out. rock up to a North game versus Essendon. Ben Mackay's laid out. You'd rock up to another game. Oh, Harry Mackay's out. They're the same person still. The big question, is there a bomber who can stop Cripper? Does Durham go to him? I chucked uh, that in there, I yeah. like that a lot, actually. I think Durham, he's obviously pretty big, but no one is like the size of Cripper. you got Bont, like, like his very similar size, but he's not a tagger from obviously the dogs. But no one from Essen. they just got a lot of short, stocky dudes that I don't think can take on Cripper. Interesting. So that'll be interesting. For the teams, Goldie comes back. Uh, these are, again, extended benches. Yep. Dylan Shield. Will Setterfield. Oh, that's a that's actually a big in, I think. We meet again. You're the Carlton uh, enemy. My enemy. <laughs> Will Setterfield's like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My enemies. Let's go. <laughs> Archie Roberts. So he's making his debut. That's kind of nice. Okay. For the Blues, Corey Durden, Jesse Motlop, Caleb Marchbat, Ooh. and Jackson Bins. Uh, Orazio of- is out injured. That's uh, not a bad Extended thing bench. So I wouldn't be – it's weird that they've sort of uh, basically gone, we've got Oe's on field. It felt like if you're going to name Motlop and Durden, mm. always maybe makes way. But 
because uh, they are essentially like Motlop. Might Motlop's, really, a, I think, is a good player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Durden and Owies play a very similar role. But mm-hmm. the best part about the Blues, obviously, the last couple of weeks is that Zach Williams has gone, hey, Jack Martin, yeah. that role that he was doing, how about I do that? I'll just kick snacks. Yeah. I'll just do that. That'd yeah. be sick. And Carlton looked awesome. That's so. really surprised me, yeah. The tricky part is he did a great defensive forward job on Dan Houston last week, and that was like sort of the underrated aspect of that game where it just sort of Definitely. took away like the playmaking from the back half of the power. Essendon have a couple of dudes like that as well, right? So I'm fascinated to see what Zach Williams does. Who does Chincotta go to? Probably Zeret would be my guess. Yeah. Maybe Nick Martin. I don't know. Uh, Nick Martin butchers the ball as uh, Kane Just let, said let him, <laughs> let him hang, hang by his own noose, you reckon? Yeah, so. I, I reckon you've got to stop Merritt because he's been kicking lots of goals as well. Either way, it's a fascinating setup. I can't wait for this game because I can't so wait excited, for Essendon yeah. to stamp themselves as the absolute <laughs> class of oh, the I AFL. can't believe I've just seen who you're tipping. It, this is the big rivalry between the Bombers, and Essendon. Essendon by 15. Wow, because they're not going to lose all year. They're not going to lose the rest of the season. I love the Bombers. Bombers by what, 15? Stats boy, they're the best team in the <laughs> AFL, bar none. Okay. They're incredible. I don't know. I, there I, is nobody beating them the rest of the way. <laughs> you just talked up Sydney. It's Bombers, 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 if you ask me. <laughs> bombers, Sydney, Grand Finals. Is that what you're saying? 100%. <laughs> nobody else is going to have a sniff. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. The Bombers by 15 against my beloved Carlton. Oh, that, I can't believe you've just said that. Uh, all right, I'm going Carlton. Oh, someone's going to tip Carlton on this podcast. Carlton by six. They will not cover the line because Carlton love a close game. Uh, oh, God. It's going to be Jim's heart rate's going to be through the roof. There'll be a, a nice uh, Instagram post after the game when the Blues win by six points. And oh, you're going, da 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 da. Oh, the Squid's beanie just jammed on the top of my head <laughs> yeah. as well. I think, what was that last yeah, week? What yeah, what was that? So uh, this, I had to literally grab the stuff yeah. that was on the back of the couch. It was a Squid's beanie and one yeah. of his uh, scarves. One of those like, like, bang. It was great. Lids <laughs> off. Lids on. <laughs> Lids back Beanies on though, after the Bombers beat us. I'll tell you that much, because the Bombers are the best team in the AFL. No <laughs> one's beating them, especially not Carlton on Sunday. Oh. It would be a real shame if Carlton beat Essendon on Sunday, I'm just saying, because I love the Bombers that much that it would be a real shame if Carlton beat them. So, <laughs> Hey, oh, Monday, right. we're doing a live stream for this game. Yes. Collingwood at Melbourne, the big freeze game. This is going to be awesome. King's birthday holiday out here, out east uh, of Australia. Uh, MCG, 3.20 p.m. Our live stream will be around 3 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, the over-under for this one is 165.5, which is pretty that interesting. because seems high. Neither of these teams can kick a score. No. And the Pies are half-point favourites, which is basically people going, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think Sunday. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know. Sunday night when the teams come out, just say Collingwood have a few ins, they'll become a, a bit, so bit heavier favourites. This is it. We don't get teams with this until Sunday. Mm-hmm. And the tricky part about it is that the Pies have a couple of folks up in line for, you know, coming back from injury, et cetera. Like there have been rumours about Will Hoskin Elliott being Pendles, back, possibly, Pendles possibly, yeah. possibly being back. Yep. Um, and then you look at the Demons and they're like, well, I think Van Royen was a suspension yes. the week prior. So if he comes back, it should, you know, change the build up and structure of that forward a few line. More goals for him, yeah. And this is going to be a massive one. The big question is, what would you dress up to go down the slider? Oh, point? I didn't even think about this. Uh, what would I dress up as? Maybe... Michael Jordan or something like that? I don't know. Or uh, I was trying to think of an NBA player and why the hell did I choose choose Michael Jordan? Don't do that. (laughs) Damn it. I shouldn't have chosen that. Um, Cancel Stats Boy. I'll be out the front (laughs) of the (laughs) G6. Cancel Stats Boy. Peyton Pritchard for the Boston Celtics going into the finals tomorrow. (laughs) You look like him. You're built like him. I should have said Peyton Pritchard. He's he's a a white, small guy that is like me. I don't know why the hell I said Michael Jordan. I think you just want to dress up in blackface. <laughs> so weirdly racist. I, I knew I shouldn't have said that. Anyway. Oh, that is bad. Can I can I stop the show? You can you can do the rest, I reckon. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love this. I'd shake what my head you, and go as Max Gorn. Max Gorn. That'd there we go. There we go. Nice. Just, you know, That's man, much better. Man, man you got the beard for it. Yeah, nice. Uh, anyway, <laughs> talk us through some stats here, stats, man. Uh, all right. Uh, Pies have won four of the last five meetings. Uh, Demons won uh, last seven day matches, though, at the MCG. So, but I think that's a bit of a – I had a look at that stat. That It's a bit of a skewed stat. They play a lot of their day matches against bad teams, yep. Sunday Arvo against, like, yeah, poor fixtures. But their last match uh, – uh, qualifying finals. So this is a qualifying final rematch from last year. Pies obviously went on to win that by seven points. But yeah, I'm hoping it's a match like that. That's pretty high scoring, but I'm going the under as well. Like you said, the forward line from both teams, they're just not flowing at all. I think this is going to be 60, 70 points each, and that's not going to get anywhere near the 165. Uh, pending the ins, I can still change this pick yeah. on Monday. I'll give you that. Because we'll be doing quite literally a live stream prior you can to talk it. talk about it. I'll be able to talk <clears> about it on camera. Uh, but I'm going to take the Demons by four. I think... Collingwood losing last week sucked. They played at Marvel against the Dogs. Yep. Cool. It was not very fun. That's okay, yeah. 
The demons got smashed by Frio. Ninety-two by points, basically yeah. hundred points. Embarrassing. Like ninety-two is essentially hundred. Yep, I'll give it. Like that. if it's anything over eighty, you lost by hundred. <laughs> let's all just be serial. So that was in Alice. It was weird. It sucked. They mm-hmm. put the cue in the racket basically at halftime. Went, whatever, boys, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Simon Goodwin's like, we're going to make some adjustments. Try harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Question mark. Well, the people were questioning their fitness. There was yeah. a when the uh, yeah. So maybe it's that a little bit. Clary's fitness but is But they a bit will be playing way. for so much pride mm. in this game. You've still got Gorn, Truck, Oliver. You've still got Bailey Fritch, Stephen Mays back there. I think they'll just be a little bit too good and a little bit too deep for the Pies. Yep. Pretty similar to what we saw last week at Marvel, right, where they were in it all game and then just that the brunt of the injuries that they'd copped really sort of were felt in that back half, right, where it's just like, oh, Oh, we're losing. Yeah, and then we're going to lose Dacos one more. is like, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to win this for Most us. Most ever contested positions. And the Congress. dogs are just too good. And I feel like the Demons might have that. So I'm going to go Melbourne by four because all of these oh, games are a, super close and awesome. That's so. a big 96-point turnaround it from is. last week. Uh, I'm going to go. Points. Yeah, 100 points. Sorry, 100 points. Pies by 10. I Yeah, I, I'll have to have a look at the teams. But even if the Pies, these teams right now, just uh, Melbourne looks so unfit, so slow and don't have any forwards to kick goals. At least Pies have some midfielders that can kick some goals. So, yeah. Maybe Go on just by. need Joel Smith to swing by. Yeah, he's not playing. I don't think. No, just, just visit. Oh. Quick visit. Oh, him, maybe, yeah. Get yeah. him up and about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is also the Big Freeze 10, so go get your yeah, beanies beanie. support the fight against Neil MND. Neil doing an awesome job. Obviously. Do that. Uh, hey, big call for the weekend ahead. The big, big call. Ooh. The Lions' season is over after this weekend. Yeah, I'll give you that. One of the twins doesn't rock up. <laughs> what Mackay's or a King? I don't care. One of the one of them. Well, the King. It's a brother's brother's yeah. brother's ball. I can see the differences in the in the Kings. Mackay's are the same person. So they are the same. They're person. not going to play against each other. This is the weekend that Essendon become oh. the ultimate contender. <laughs> can I can I just stop the Essendon chat? This is so annoying. No, it's going to be great because <laughs> they're going to be so good against Carlton on Sunday night. Everybody's going to go. Oh wow! Give the flag to Essendon after this game. <laughs> That's at, how good they're going to be. Second on the ladder. I mean, it'd be a real <laughs> shame if my big call just didn't happen. But look, Essendon are going to stamp themselves as genuinely the best team in the AFL after this Sunday and against we, Carlton. Oh, there you go. We are known for getting our big goals right, aren't we? Yeah. We get them right all the time. <laughs> yeah, every week. It'd be a real shame if I missed on that one. <laughs> Stats boy, big call. Oh, I already said it, but North will finally win a game. I will be cheering all weekend. You might not hear from me next week if we shirts win a game. Off. Shirts it's just off. Like 100%. I, might be, I think I'm going to be down at the beach uh, with some mates, so we'll, I'll be watching that. You're watching the cricket on Sunday night somewhere as and well. And the aren't cricket you? on yep. Sunday, which uh, if you want to check out the live stream on cricket today, uh, you and all the socials will be doing something for that, which would be 12:30 a.m. in the city with Marcus and I. Could get a bit loose, but we'll see how that goes. If <laughs> you wouldn't have slept because the Roos would have won the <laughs> afternoon prior. If the Roos don't win, you've just gone 30, oh. 48 straight hours. You'll be like Millhouse <laughs> under all the chairs after the Spinal Tap concert. I won't know where. Hello. I'm. <laughs> Yeah, but my big call, North will win, and then Paul Curtis is going to kick four. He's going to be a part of that win. He's had a lot of games where he's kicked two or three. He's kicked three twice this year, and I think, yeah, there's just not that matchup. He's so strong, and I think he's going to be the difference. No one ever talks about Paul Curtis, and I think he's underrated. So Counterpoint, big call. Plus. Yeah? The J train, Jake Waterman kicks eight. I, I think that could happen. Could he kick eight and we still win? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. If he, if right. he kicks eight, their whole score's eight. Goals. We're on. Maybe. Keep an eye on. What are we keeping an eye on this weekend? It is round 13. We are missing only a couple of teams this week, right? No. Yes. Which ones are we missing? Two. Uh, Port and Freer. That's it. So yeah. missing a couple of ones. So the biggest ones here are Brisbane's final chances. Like they're literally on – it's like win or go home essentially for the Lions this week. Yep. So that's a huge one. As I mentioned, like I think they lose. I think their season's cooked. I agree. Uh, outside of that, the Hawks. If they really put up a big fight and actually go out there and hammer and tongs it against the GWS Giants in Tassie, where it's like, ha-ha, weird stuff has- happens in Tassie, <laughs> remember? This is one of the adages here on AFL Today, where it's like, yeah, weird stuff happens in Tassie. Yeah, maybe James Sisley will turn his, his turn Sisley around could if have they like, win down there. He could have like the game of his career. He's like, I'm never leaving Tassie. He moves to Tassie? No, nah, that's never happening. <laughs> oh, I love that. Ah, uh, And then finally... Melbourne and Collingwood's offense. We talked about that a bit. Keep but an eye on just it. Just like if they can score more than sixty points. <laughs> Which, or, sorry, Collingwood got eighty last week. That was Melbourne under the roof. were an embarrassment. Yep. So we'll see what Melbourne happens. to bounce back. We'll see how that. Fascinating goes. one as well. Like Richmond Adelaide tonight is to keep an eye on for this weekend. Mm-hmm. Like if Adelaide don't win this game, like their season is basically cooked as well. And I believe it is Richmond's worst start to a season basically post-war period. So. Oh. 
Not great, that's considering not- that's a team that hasn't had a giant amount of success apart from the last decade. Yes. Anyway, hey, super coach, tips, vibes, and thoughts before yes. we go to the weekend. Stats, man, what are you looking at here? Oh, I just chucked in the people that people uh, the players that people are bringing in: Ridley, Warner, and Fisher. Fisher, we talked about earlier in the week. I'm still not sold on him, but a lot of people are just because he gets, he's been getting a lot of the ball, thirty touches in a few games this year already. Uh, and Ridley, he's playing West Coast, so. and he's playing West Coast. Yeah, and then you got Warner, who's just like just taking Brown their votes off Heaney every week, which is, he's been great. Ridley as well. He's a bit cheaper, uh, I think, uh, 530, 30, yeah. which is good for a guy that's yeah been scoring over 110 last month or so. I'm fascinated by the Ridley uh, score this weekend because mm. they then have the bye. Uh, yep. The Don. So I pulled the trigger on Zach Fisher rather than Ridley in yep. the end. You I did. Get- I had gone Ridley most of the week. That's all right. And then I'm like, Fish is that much cheaper. He doesn't have a buy the rest of the way, so I can just leave, you know, leave him in there can and play. Can suss him. really the next couple of weeks, yeah. Outside of that, the rookies, Will Dawson's like the big one that's sort of come in for folks. I'm not entirely convinced about his scoring. Yeah, ability. I don't mind him. He's got a break even to minus 46, which is huge. It, even if you score in 50s, you're going to get make a lot of money. I think that's the only reason. Yep. No one's expecting him to score. Because the other options are like Lockie McNeil for the dogs who might just get bevoed. Yeah, uh, I don't know. He could be in and out of the side. That's why he's less. Lecalier is with the other big one, Lecalier. I think, for GWS. He's yep. named, obviously, because there's no changes to those teams. So He's great, yeah. Should be interesting. Can't wait. Uh, who are you vice captain and captaining stats? Uh, man? Let me have a quick look. I'll probably go Bont. Uh, tomorrow night. I think sure. he's going to have a big one. He got coming off 186. I don't care if he gets 50 points less than that. That's a good captain score. And then... I don't care, he says. Yeah, I don't, it's all right. And then uh, Nick Dacos. Dacos, he's going to have a big game on Monday. Even if the Pies have wins, they still have a lot of outs and he just has to get a lot of the ball for the Pies to win. So, yeah. I'm still sticking with my Heaney against the Cats. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he could have a massive, massive game as they run over the top of the Cats. Yep. Into Dacos as the captain. To Dacos. Okay, nice. Nice one. All right. Is that it? It is. Oh, my God. That's it. That is the AFL Today Show for today for the Thursday Night Tomb Show. But we'll be back on Monday. That's right, because this round doesn't actually finish until after the game on Monday. Yeah, we'll do the show, yeah. Where we'll be doing a live stream. That's yes, right. And we'll have Al from Supercoach hanging out with us. It'll be myself, Alex, and Al hanging out in the James studio. James and the two Al's. Love that. Uh, <laughs> just chilling out, watching that game, giving you running commentary on break-even, Supercoach updates, all this good stuff. Awesome. Uh, some of the picks, betting stuff as well in there. It'll be pretty fun. I can't wait, actually. A couple of spicy kombuchas, hmm. Monday afternoon, public holiday. And then we'll roll straight into an AFL today. It should be very good. Very nice. So thank you to Stats Boy for jumping on tonight. Thank you very much. He'll be around for the Monday night show as well. I will. Uh, remember to smash a like for the AFL Today show across all the socials. Uh, and you can see us doing lots of fun stuff. As I mentioned, on Facey, IG, X, Threads, TikTok. Not Threads. YouTube. We're on Threads, surely. <laughs> threads is, this is dead. <laughs> Says you. Don't you need some uplifting messages in your life every so often? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, subscribe, star, and like all of our shows across your podcast apps as well. Quick Today podcast, Football Today podcast, a cracking NBA Australia. We have game one of the NBA yes. finals tomorrow. It's going to be Go absolutely Boston. chaos. Uh, your mate Jim will be on all over that for the NBA Australia as well as NFL Australia and hold all tickets. A new episode of that one out today too. Get around all of those. Like, I don't know. Who is going to go massive for the... Oh, we already mentioned Alan Jakovic the other day. No, you can go again. Just go why, again. Why like not? Alan Jakovic getting around a few tins and a few torps back in his day. Why not? There was no one... There were very few players ever in the AFL more exciting than Alan Jakovic. He played like less than 100 games. Did he? Chaos. I thought he would have played more than that. That's I miss crazy. Alan Jakovic. Awesome. Anyway, there you go. That's it. Dunskies, we'll catch you on Monday for the live stream of AFL today for the Collingwood Melbourne game. For the King's birthday, can't wait for that. Until then, look after yourselves. And remember, round 13, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With sports today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.